हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नसीर इकबाल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कश्मीर श्रीनगर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल इंट्रोडक्शन टू टेलीस्कोप्स अंडर द पेपर ऑफ एस्ट्रोनॉमी एंड एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स after completing this module the students will be able to write a brief introductory remarks on the telescopic science and its specific relevance to the observational purposes how the upgradation of telescopes have taken place what are the different optical parts of a telescope to point out the major merits and demerits of the reflecting and the refracting telescopes and which type of a telescope is more friendly for observing various objects and what are the specific reasons for such a type and what is the importance of telescope in science and technology so let's discuss first the introduction since the inception of astronomical studies about 400 years ago the need to study the fainter and fainter objects has naturally led the interest in studying constructing and using a telescope of even larger diameter a telescope is a device whose basic technical purpose is to provide a high quality image of distant objects which may be a point source or even some extended sources it is simply an optical instrument that aids in the observation of remote objects by collecting electromagnetic radiation the construction of telescope is important in the sense that it should be pointed at the desired objects field furthermore because of the movement of the objects due to earth's rotation the telescope must provide the means to compensate this movement first practical telescopes were invented in netherlands at the beginning of the 17th century by using glass lenses within few decades the reflecting telescope was invented which used mirrors to collect and focus the light hans lippershey midberg from holland invented the refracting telescope in year 1608 in 20th century many new types of telescopes were invented unlike all other branches of science astronomy is limited to observations aside from the analysis of meteorites and some use of space probes no experimentation has been much successful 
so far. It's believed that the astronomer on earth is a passive observer. Galileo was the first to use a telescope for observational purpose. Telescope designs have given upgraded from the very earlier times. Kepler invented the design of the telescope which was found much friendly while using it for observational purposes. An astronomical telescope has three important basic functions. It should have a high quality so that high quality imaging can be done by the given telescope and it should have good pointing so that it can be pointed exactly towards the object that we are interested for. Number third, it should have a good tracking in the sense that the best telescope should be able to track along those sources which we want to take into the field of view for the observations. Telescopes are broadly classified into two types, the reflecting telescope and the refracting telescope. For reflecting telescope, Sir Isaac Newton is always remembered as the inventor of the reflecting telescope. The Newtonian telescope is a type of the reflecting telescope is using a concave primary mirror and a flat diagonal secondary mirror. Newton's first reflecting telescope was completed in 1668 and is the earliest known functional reflecting telescope. Here we see in the given figure we have a reflecting telescope which actually we also call it as a Newtonian one. We have the incidental light coming from a source and gets incident on the lens here after performing the reflection it gets reflected back and then simultaneously it again goes through to the target. So, in reflecting telescopes the primary mirror reflects the part back to a focus instead of refracting it. The primary mirror has a concave spherical or a parabolic shape and as it reflects the light it inverts the image at the focal plane. The basic principle of a concave reflecting mirror is shown in the given figure. Here we see in this figure how the incident light coming from some source gets reflected from the primary mirror and here the primary mirror is located at the lower end of the telescope of the telescope tube in a reflector and has its front surface coated with some material like a thin film of metal. For example, it can be aluminum. The back of the mirror is usually made up of a glass. Although other materials have been used from time to time with the advent of new telescopes. There are some materials 
having some expansion coefficients these expansion coefficients of the materials take care of the shape of the mirror which somehow gets affected as the temperature of the telescope changes during night hours reflecting telescopes have few advantages over the refracting ones the following are the advantages like reflecting telescopes do not suffer from chromatic aberration because all wavelengths will reflect off the mirror in the same way number 2 the reflecting telescopes are much cheaper to construct number 3 since the light is reflecting off from the objective therefore only one side of the reflecting telescopes objective needs to be a perfect in addition to these advantages there are however few disadvantages as well number 1 the optics alignment can get disturbed number 2 the tube is open and therefore it needs a continue kind of monitoring number 3 the secondary mirror and it is support can produce diffraction effects here we discuss one more important kind of a telescope that's called the cassegarian telescope the cassegarian is basically the name of the inventor who was from france and he invented an important reflecting telescope it may be noted here that the cassegarian has remained a contemporary of the newton and therefore there has been a sharp competition in constructing a reflecting telescope this instrument employs a small convex mirror to reflect the light back through a small hole in the primary mirror to a fox located behind the primary in the given figure you see here we have a typical kind of a cassegarian reflector many large telescopes of this kind do not have a hole in the primary mirror but use a small plane mirror in front of the primary mirror to reflect the light outside the main tube and provide another place for its observations so this kind of a design permits short tubes relative to the mirror diameter if you see here in the given diagram of a cassegarian telescope you have here a telescope tube inside the telescope tube you have the primary mirror you have the secondary mirror and the eyepiece the incident light comes directly from the source and falls on the primary mirror after getting reflected from the primary mirror it incidents on a secondary mirror again it gets reflected and finally it falls directly on the eyepiece in today's reflecting telescopes they have a huge gauge at their prime focus and they permit the observer to sit inside the telescope tube while working with 
the instrument they have also small guide telescopes mounted parallel to the main optical axis to facilitate in locating the desired object these guide telescopes have low magnification and a wide field of view now here we talk about the refracting telescopes telescopes of this kind are used basically to examine the visible light region part of the electromagnetic spectrum when we talk about the electromagnetic spectrum we consider all kinds of electromagnetic radiations starting from gamma rays to radio waves so in electromagnetic spectrum for example we view the moon and few objects of the solar system the refracting telescope uses a lens to gather and focus the light the physical shape of the components can be like convex it can be concave or even it can be plane and parallel the given figure shows here a typical refracting telescope the first lens through which light from an object passes is called the objective or simply it's called the objective lens the light gets inverted at the focal plane a secondary lens called as eyepiece is placed behind the focal plane and enables the observer to view the enlarged or the magnified image so in the given figure we have a lens and you see the incident rays of light are coming from the source and fall directly on this lens after having a refraction they fall they get refracted and meet at a single point at the focal plane so between the lens and the focal plane we can talk about the focal length like reflecting telescopes the refracting telescopes have also some advantages here we discuss some of them number 1 the refracting telescopes seem are more resistant as a result of which the alignment of the optical system gets not disturbed as compared to the reflecting one number 2 it does not need any kind of continuous monitoring as the tube inside is sealed and therefore it has a less atmospheric effect as the tube is closed from outside the atmospheric air currents are negligible as a result of which the images are very sharp as compared to the reflecting ones although the refracting telescopes have many advantages but still because of some more effective drawbacks the demand of the construction of the refracting telescope in astronomical research is less here we mention few disadvantages of this type refracting telescopes suffer from chromatic aberration which produces a rainbow of colors around the image nowadays people have devised few methods for reduction of this 
chromatic abrasion. Because of this defect, earlier telescopes constructed were very bigger in size. The ultraviolet does not pass through the lens and therefore, it also marks an important defect in the telescope. By increasing the thickness of the lens more and more, it will ultimately affect the moving of the light through it. Since the objective lens can be supported at the end point only, therefore, the lens will always have an effect due to its own weight. Now, the important part here is how these telescopes whether the reflecting or the refracting one work. So, before this we have basically discussed the two types the reflecting and the refracting one. Let us first discuss here the working of a reflecting telescope. In reflecting telescopes, it may be noted that mirrors are used to focus the light together. Here in the given figure, we have a concave mirror. This mirror is used to focus the reflected light. So, if you see here a reflecting telescope, you have a focal length and similarly we can talk about the focus point or even also called as the focal point. So, the again the rays of light are coming from the source, they fall on the mirror, they get reflected and meet at a single point called as the focus point. As and when the incident light strikes the surface, it may be seen here that the incident light bounces back. For a smooth surface, the light gets reflected and for a flat surface, the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence or even the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. We know that curved mirrors bend light and make parallel light rays to converge them to a fox. Fox is in the path of the incoming light, hence there are different ways of making images from the mirror visible. For example, if we see a Newtonian reflector it has a flat mirror which is used to point means to focus the light rays out to an eyepiece. These things you can verify, you can see from figure 1.7. In figure this 1.7, you have the plane mirror, you have the other mirror, secondary mirror, you have the incoming light comes to the plane mirror, it gets reflected, strikes on the secondary mirror, again gets reflected and then you can view the focal length and the focus point from this very schematic diagram. Now, we will talk about the working of a refracting telescope. Here, we use two lenses to focus the incident light. Convex lenses are used as they bend the light inwards. This you can see from the given figure. So, in this given figure for viewing the refracting telescope, you have the two lenses, one to be named as the objective lens and the another one to be named as the eyepiece lens. From objective lens, you can see how the rays of light 
come from different source and gets refracted finally meeting at the focus point and then you have an eyepiece from which we can view this a uh, focus point so when a light enters from one medium to another one it may be noted that it is a refractive index of the medium that plays a role in the refraction of the incident light light travels at much slower speeds through different materials such as glass or air while traveling from one medium to another some part of it gets reflected at the surface of the new medium the light that continues through the new medium will either speed up or slow down depending on how fast it can travel through each medium light bends towards the normal when traveling into a medium with a higher index of refraction and away from the normal when traveling into a medium where it can go faster these things you can see from figure as discussed right now in this figure the light enters from one medium to the another one and it is a refractive index of the medium that plays a role in the refraction of the incident light light travels at much slower speeds through different materials such as glass or air while traveling from one medium to another some part of it gets reflected at the surface of the new medium the light that continues through the new medium will either speed up or slow down depending on how fast it can travel through each medium light bends towards the normal while traveling into a medium with a high index of refraction and away from the normal when traveling into a medium where it can go faster in this diagram light is leaving air and entering glass so it bends towards the normal on the way in and away on the way out of the glass no one no one important part of this telescopes and their relations with the research and development so what is the importance of these telescopes whether it is a reflecting whether it is a refracting whether it is a ground based whether it is a space based so what is their importance in the research and development in today's scientific world telescopes has become an icon of science and technology it is an instrument of our thought some people call it an instrument which is helpful to extend our senses into reality anything that we observe and anything that we see and anything that we discover telescope has a history of about 400 years it has really changed our perception in so many ways from observing cluster of galaxies observing a galaxy itself observing cluster of stars observing a star itself or even observing the sun as a whole the pioneering work of the galileo telescope 
मेड क्लियर दैट द यूनिवर्स वॉज फार लार्जर देन हैड बीन इमेजनड एंड आवर प्लेस इन इट इज फार स्मॉलर देन हैड बीन इमेज वन कैन देयर फॉर नॉट हिजिटेट टू राइट और टू से दैट हैड देयर बीन नो टेलीस्कोप there would have been a very very limited concept of the universe research and development which we generally called as r&d is an important aspect of any kind of innovation with this description we can assess the economic growth of the country particularly in the field of science and technology what makes the difference between the developed and the underdeveloped countries is the growth of r and d so students let us see what we are going to learn in this module telescope its types the role of the reflecting telescope the role of the refracting telescope in astronomical science the merits and demerits of a reflecting telescope of a refracting telescope the working module of the reflecting telescope and the refracting telescope and what kind of parameters are important in the functioning of a telescope and one important thing that we are going to learn is the role of telescopes in the research and development thank you